The father with his kids in tow yelled a couple of obscenities at the gate agent. Why won't you just open that door and let us on that plane? It's sitting right there. I can see it. The agent says, I can't do that. Why not? The other agent on your late plane said they'd called ahead and we ran as fast as we could. We, we left this morning at 6 o'clock. We've been traveling all day. Now open that blankety blank door. The agent, I can't do that. You need to go to customer service between gates 25 and 26 and let them rebook you. You, the dad trotted off dragging both kids behind him. Five minutes later, the wife shows up at the gate. You've ruined our family vacation. We've been traveling 10 hours, trapped on your delayed plane. Now you won't open that door. Let us on that plane. It's obviously still sitting there. I can see it. The agent kept his head down, still king, did not even respond to her. I want to talk to a supervisor, the wife said. Without a word, the gate agent picks up the phone, dials someone, then says, he'll be over here after a bit. The customer, this is totally unacceptable. A complete day, two days traveling, 10 hours, you're ruining our vacation. The supervisor finally shows up and hauls the wife off across the corridor to talk things over with with the rest of us passengers seated there in the gate area taking in the whole scene. Five minutes later, the dejected wife returns to the gate area where her husband and the two kids still in tow rejoin them. All hope is drained from their voices. The wife continues to fill in the husband about her encounter with the supervisor. He just told me that they were rebooking on the next flight. He never even said he was sorry. Can you believe that? They ruined our entire vacation, and he never even said he was sorry. There wasn't a sorry bone in his body. At least he could have said he was sorry just once. I felt her pain, and from the looks on the faces of those others passengers seated around in the gate area, watching this whole thing unfold, they could identify with that gut reaction. My turn came this past week during our house renovation. The renovation company sent off his report to the insurance company for the damage and then promptly left on vacation for India. He made errors that left things in disarray and put the project on hold for five weeks. Upon his return, when learning that his report contained inaccuracies and incomplete information, no apology. No apology whatsoever for the five-week delay was forthcoming. Just somebody else must have fouled up. A day later, we hear from him, the subcontractor, same complaint. Foul up, no follow-up, no apology from this guy. Three days later, repeat performance. He misses a scheduled meeting with us by half an hour. When the inconvenience is called to his attention, no apology. Total silence. Results? We'll probably never work with his company again on future jobs. Personal accountability for mistakes and the ability to apologize is critical for long-term relationships. To earn respect as a leader, to build trust and gain cooperation, to set the example for your team, to keep customers loyal through inevitable glitches during the sales and implementation cycle. Most people can find it in their heart to forgive if the other person owns up. But that's a big if hurdle for some people to jump. And nobody should be working directly with customers who can't deal with that ego tripwire. Does everyone in your organization, from senior leaders to frontline reps, understand the payoff for apologies and the penalties for their absence?